purpose of this video is to quickly go over four tips for liquor retailers. And uh, this applies to basically if you're a liquor store, beer store, wine store, combination of the above. This comes from 30 years of working in the retail space as well as some very personal experiences with site visits uh, that involved over 120 beer, wine, and liquor retailers all across the United States. So I'm going to go through this very quickly in the interest of time for you here. But tip number one, respond to reviews. Uh, you know, it, it, you see those reviews on Facebook and Google, Yelp, etc. It just it's good business practice. Whether it's a good review, medium review, or poor review, it's good for you to show that you care to the customers by responding to those reviews. And don't use canned responses. Use a personal response. Just you know, a sentence or two is usually all it takes. And there's an added benefit here, and that would be when the search engines look at you responding to those reviews, it's a good thing. And that will help with your search engine placement within the search engine results when someone's looking for a beer, wine, or liquor store. Okay, tip number two. Please keep your business information updated. Uh, you know, your hours of operation, contact information, etc. You know, especially on Google, Yelp, Facebook, and your own business website. There were two occasions recently where I went to pick something up at a liquor store. They showed that they opened at 8 a.m. and I got there around 9.30. And in most cases, the stores were closed and no one was home. And I'm just one person, so imagine how many other potential customers saw that the business was supposed to open at a certain time, got there, it was closed, went somewhere else. I've also had instances where businesses are closed on Mondays, uh, and it's not listed anywhere. So it's just good practice as you change your hours or do other things, move, change your phone number, email, website, just keep everything updated, please. All right, phones, another thing. Um, folks, I have called over 200 liquor stores all across the United States uh, since the beginning of this year. 80% of you had at least one of these following issues. Voicemail box was full, so I couldn't leave you a voicemail. Voicemail's not been set up message. There again, I could not leave you a voicemail. Or the third one here, I got a generic greeting with no business information. So am I calling the right business? Or you, you know, this is frustrating, especially when you're waiting on me to get back to you on something and I can't do it because the voicemail is full, hasn't been set up, or I'm not sure I'm calling the right person, the right business. So please keep that voicemail set up. You know, if I am having issues, then imagine your customers. You know, how many folks are you losing because they can't leave a message like, hey, do you carry this brand of vodka or do you do keg rentals or stuff like that or we're planning a, a party? Um, you know, do you offer delivery? Things like that. So it's just common business practice to, if you're not able to answer the phone, have voicemail set up so customers and folks you are working with can get a hold of you. All right, final tip here. You probably knew this was coming. Use a point of sale system that's not just designed for liquor stores, but it's also designed for state specific requirements. You know, it's not just good enough to use any old point of sale program. It needs to be designed for liquor retailers. Again, I mean, you know, beer, wine, and liquor retailers. You have special needs, you have age-restricted products, you have, you know, different ways of ordering, things like that. It's not just good enough to use a, a generic point-of-sale system. Even more strongly needed than that is use a point-of-sale system and a company that understands your state-specific requirements. You know, if we look at Oregon, there's a merchant services contract that's required. 
If we look at states like Texas, Pennsylvania, Idaho, there's state-specific daily, weekly, or monthly reports that have to be submitted. They're very strict on what those reports have to contain. You know, Arkansas, you can offer delivery, but you can't use a third-party delivery company. Washington State, and I think uh, Illinois or another state, you have volume-based sales tax. I guarantee you a normal point of sale system is not going to handle a volume-based tax. That's just not a common thing, nor is, you know, uh, most point of sale companies are not going to understand that. So use point of sale that's designed not just for beer, wine, and liquor stores, but also for state-specific requirements. And, you know, if you look at the cloud retailer liquor store point of sale software, we've got specialized state-specific versions. Uh, and this is just a partial list. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that and those are my tips. As always, you know, I appreciate any feedback, any comments. We love hearing from beer, wine, and liquor retailers all across the United States. And especially if any tips for other states that have some unique uh, requirements, that's always welcomed as well. We'll put the contact information in the video description. And thanks for watching.